Hi folks, cutting steel on the Tormach 770. I know I can do it, but to me, it's a new machine. So let's use this quarter inch four flute Lakeshore carbide tool. Let's work up a feed and speed recipe. Let's look at the chip and let's understand how to get a good cut recipe. Welcome to our Wednesday widget. Let's look up the recommended feeds and speeds. So lakeshorecarbide.com, technical resources, speeds and feeds. So we happen to have the variable flute for steel, which is really cool. What does variable flute mean? It means that the four flutes aren't actually 90 degrees apart from each other, but rather offset a little bit, which can help with the cutting parameters and the harmonics and frankly stuff that I don't understand, but it's cool. But I also wanna look up the general purpose feeds and speeds, because I wanna show you what a wide range we get for surface feet per minute. So on a variable flute, we get a range for steel of 600 to 750 surface feet. But if we pull up the general purpose for steel, low carbon, it's 250 to 500. So my total surface footage range between the regular and the high performance is 250 up to 750. Well, if we look at what that means for RPMs, for a quarter inch end mill, 250 surface feet is 3,800 RPMs, 750 is 11,500. That's bonkers, so it's a crazy wide range. By the way, we're making this speeds and feed sheet available for folks that support our channel on Patreon card here. So where do you start? We absolutely have to start with a recipe that works. In other words, I don't wanna start with a recipe that's too aggressive and where you get chatter and you have to start downgrading the specs to find the sweet spot. Let's find something that works and build up. So I'm gonna start actually below the lowest recommended surface footage per minute. And you know what, that's okay, because frankly I could create a good cut with this probably even at 50 surface feet per minute, which would only be 760 RPM surface footage I know people are gonna yell at me when I say it doesn't matter, but the truth is what matters more is the relationship between your inch per tooth, your cut, and the surface footage. Let's go easy, especially since it's a new machine. Recommended chip load, this is 1.4 thousandths per flute. The general tool is between a thou and two thou. So let's start at one thou per tooth, and that's, to be honest, what I use most of the time. So 0.001. So our starting recipe is 3,000 RPMs, 12 inches a minute. What about my width and depth of cut? In this little area here, depth of cut, you can go up to 200%. So on a quarter inch tool, that means you can go up to half an inch deep. Width of cut, I say anything between five and 25% of width of cut. That means anywhere from 13 thou up to 63 thou. So I've already mapped out our first three cuts today. We're starting with the cut I just mentioned. Then the next thing we're gonna do is bump up the, the surface footage, which is RPM, keeping the chip load the same. And then after that, we'll keep the RPMs the same, but we'll increase the chip load, which will also result in an increase in inch per minute. This is our part that I were cutting. I would like to take the full depth of cut here, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So that may be the next question is, can, do, can the machine and the speeds and feeds and that tool support this? One of the things I've learned, I used to take speeds and feeds cuts in straight passes, and I've learned that that's not always a good example. You need to see how the tool performs as it goes into corners, even with adaptive, but how does it handle transitional moves between X and Y axis and so forth. So this is closer to the part that we're about to make for an upcoming Wednesday widget. Okay, so three cuts, 
good. The machine sounded good. If you take a look at the chips, chips one and two should look the same. What's different is we were running at a higher surface feet per minute. So what I'd wanna see is are we getting any heat in the chip? We're running such a low surface feet per minute that I didn't expect that here, but that's what happens when you run at a higher SFM, you're looking to see is the chip starting to turn brown or even blue. Going between two and three, I should see a bigger chip. Why? Because we moved from one thou per tooth to about 1.4 thou per tooth. The 1.4 was the starting recommendation of a feed rate on the variable speed. So what's next? Well, one of the reasons I kept the width of cut so small was I really want to move this to a full 3 8 inch depth of cut. So we've got this happy medium here of a recipe. Let's see if the everything, the machine, the tool, the work holding, the tool holder can handle going from a 0.1875 depth of cut to the full 0.375 or 3 8 inch depth of cut. Okay, so no, I don't know why, but we can't handle full depth of cut here, period. That was way too much chatter. Chatter is never okay. So this is a 375 deep feature that I need to machine. You'll see it in the, I think next week's Wednesday widget. So there's no choice. I've got to do it in two depths of cut. So to speed up material removal, let's start increasing the width of cut and pushing the machine a little harder. Cause I know we've got tons of horsepower and material removal capability left. It just ain't happening with that full depth of cut. Okay, so that went great. And now here's the thing, folks, I am human. It's fun to on camera talk about baby steps, alternate this, alternate this, I got stuff to do. And look, I'll be honest, I'm actually guilty sometimes of not starting at the right starting point. In fact, I may or may not have filmed this whole video starting at a recommendation, I think of 500 service feet, way too fast, instant chatter, and don't do that. It's demoralizing, it's hard on your tools. Uh, you've kind of just bu buggered up the whole result. So I can't emphasize enough, start it somewhere that is good. It gives you the confidence. You see we can read these chips. But now, like I said, I am human. Let's bump it up, darn it. I'm gonna keep the surface footage the same. I just, for me personally, I like keeping on the lower end of the recommended range on this machine. But let's jump up to 2,000 per tooth chip load and let's increase our width of cut to 50,000. So that's really increasing the material removal. Again, we'll have all this, uh, Excel file has all the stored recipes here. Let's see how she runs. Awesome, so I actually really like this chip. If you take a look at it, it's just ever so slightly starting to turn a little bit straw colored or brown. That's good, that means we're getting some heat into the chip means we're not babying it so much with low surface footage that we're just leaving a lot of tool power and machine power on the table. On the flip side, when you have a chip that's blue, that means it soaked up all the heat that it could, which usually means you're also leaving heat back in the part. Uh, I guess the perfect chip in the perfect world is a chip that's straw color that turns blue after it leaves the machine. Anyways, I'm calling this good. For the project at hand, I like that recipe. I like that chip. I love the way it sounds. Uh, if you're asking me where would I push it from here, uh, you know, I probably, there's probably maybe 50 service feet left. I, I could, I don't know how much more. You could probably increase the width of cut more, but again, I, I like that thinner width of cut because it helps evacuate the chips. It's just, it's a nice looking chip. So for me, uh, that's, I would much rather have a safe cutting operation that's not gonna load up the flutes. It's gonna leave good service finishes. You're gonna get good tool life out of it. And if you wanna maximize material removal, you do need to take the time to build up that zigzag method. Bump up the surface footage a little, bump up the chip load a little, alternate back and forth, read your chips. And uh, here's a little bit more of that footage from our fail attempt on this first video ever. We are all human. Speeds and fees are this just giant mystery and they don't have to be, especially when you're using basic materials. Yes, when you get into some stainlesses or ink canals or titanium, it's more of a, you gotta take certain recipes and bands or else you're hosed, but steels, aluminums, coppers, all that stuff, fun stuff to machine. Take care folks, see you soon.